self-love has become a buzzword that you may be feeling has become a little bit cringeworthy when you hear it because we hear it everywhere and for a lot of people it's because there's a level of awareness of needing to have more love for themselves and seeing all the memes on social media and blasting by them and thinking yeah that makes sense but they don't know how to implement it or they're just tired of hearing about it especially if they've been struggling with how they feel about themselves and where they're at in their lives. This is the Heal Your Love Wounds podcast and I am your host Iris Seriani. We tend to not shower ourselves with positive self-talk and do nice things for ourselves when we are not feeling good about ourselves but that is exactly when we need to practice being at the very least nice to ourselves. It can be quite challenging to implement and to be consistent in the practice for a few reasons and I want to highlight that self-love is a practice just like meditation is a practice. We have been so conditioned to not be so kind to ourselves with our subconscious thoughts. So the process of practicing self-love is also about retraining your thought patterns. But here are a few reasons that it is also challenging to implement and be consistent with self-love. We think that self-love is selfish or that others will see us as being selfish, but it's not like that. In this episode, I'm going to share three ways in which you can create a self-love practice that does not make you feel or appear selfish. Another reason is we have lost that loving feeling for ourselves because we haven't let go of our past, and that's a big one. And another reason is we have become so overwhelmed in life that we don't even know where to start. So let me help you get started from exactly where you are right now. I really encourage you to change your perspective of what having love for yourself really is. The love you have for yourself is really the connection you have to your heart. It's also the energy that emits from your heart. So when you have this connection, you feel a sense of value and pride with who you are and what you have to give in loving exchange to others that ultimately makes the world a better place. There are a lot of people doing really great work in the world, but they also sacrifice their well-being in doing so. We cannot give more than what we have to offer. I ran out of gas this week in my car, and I didn't get very far on an empty tank, and it did not feel good either. That is the feeling we have when we give more than we have. One part of self-love is knowing when you need to take time for yourself to relax, connect back to yourself, and be in nature, and be good to yourself. That is not selfish in the least, and the only people who think self-love is selfish are the ones who haven't awakened to their own heart's connection. And with all of this in mind, let's look at three ways in which you can create a self-love practice that does not make you feel or appear selfish. Number one. Who are you giving your energy to? So let's talk about energy vampires. We have all been in situations when we are having a conversation with somebody and we can literally feel the life force energy leaving our body. This is a one way energy exchange. And until we have the awareness of this one way energy exchange, and how it makes us feel, we will continue to find ourselves in these situations. 
because there is a law of reciprocity. When we give, we must also receive. There must be that balance in all things. You do not need to give your energy to people who are unable to give their energy back to you in a way that also fills you. It doesn't need to be reciprocated in the exact same way that you give, but there must be a balance. And one of the things that people have a difficult time with is that whole process of receiving. So many people are givers and caretakers and have been groomed to give more of themselves, but don't allow themselves to receive. So some self-love questions to consider is, are you able to receive from others? And are you giving your energy because of something rooted in fear and guilt, such as losing your relationship or a friendship or a job? Many people don't allow themselves to receive because of beliefs they have created in their past. So can you take a look at any people in your life that leave you feeling depleted after you spend time with them? And then can you ask yourself what your fear is when it comes to creating space between you and them or What is stopping you from allowing somebody else to give back to you? There are a lot of hidden truths about why we give our time and energy to people who give nothing in return. So let's move on to the second way to create a self-love practice. How are you using your time? Believe it or not, Time is our most valuable resource. When it's your time, that's all the time you had. So the question becomes, did you experience everything you wanted to experience? We waste a lot of time doing things we don't want to be doing, spending time with people who don't support us and drain our energy or distracting ourselves from ourselves so that we don't have to think or feel. I think we've all said this to ourselves at one time or another, at least I know I have. Well, that was a complete waste of time, or there's an hour or more that I'll never get back. We have to think about how we invest our time and how we are being reciprocated in that exchange of time. If you are always giving your time away and getting nothing from that, that is a good place to have a look at what are you trying to avoid and why are you doing it? Invest time into yourself by taking care of your health, reading books or listening to audio that actually help you grow. Learn something new and create something so you can feel proud of yourself. And try to avoid investing your time in things like gossip and hanging around with people and doing things that add nothing of value to your life and doing things that drain you and leave you feeling depressed and defeated and the obvious thing that comes to mind is being in a job that doesn't breathe life into us. We only have so much time. What is it that you want to do and what do you want to create for your life and where are you diverting your time that is stunting your growth and your forward movement. This is really relevant for people who are stuck in their life because when you're stuck in your life, we have a tendency to distract ourselves and not use our time wisely. And sometimes using our time wisely while we're trying to figure things out 
involves reading books and expanding our mind and doing research about different possibilities of what's possible. And the third one is tap into your creativity. This is a really good self-love practice for anyone, but especially if you're feeling not so good about yourself and where you're at in your life, is to tap into something creative. We just talked about investing in ourselves. When we create, it makes us feel proud of what we have created. And when we create, it's not to be kept for ourselves. It's meant to be shared with others. And when we do things that we share from our heart with others and others have an appreciation for what we have created, it makes us feel good. It's not in a egoic or vain way. It just makes us feel good to be sharing something with somebody else that appreciates something that we have created. And it makes us feel proud. We create art to share with those that resonate because it makes them feel something. Music is the same way. I've heard so many people say that music saved their life. It makes them feel something and it makes them feel connected. So whether you write poetry, books, or a blog, or you produce music for others, or you sing, make pottery, or create art in your own unique way, whether you dance, whether you're an actor, you play an instrument, or you build things, whatever it is, it comes from your heart to touch the hearts of others. And there is nothing selfish or self-sacrificing in creative expression. So do more of what makes you feel proud and don't be afraid to share it with the world because of what others will think. And remember we talked about those energy vampires earlier? Well, sometimes when you create things, sometimes those energy vampires are going to show up as naysayers and they'll have all kinds of judgments and criticisms they are going to be unable to appreciate someone else's creations because the only people who think self-love is selfish are the ones who haven't awakened to their own heart's connection. And I know I already said that, but it's really worth mentioning again. So steer clear of those people and share your creations with those who can appreciate them. So as you can see, self-love isn't just about the nice things you say to yourself. They aren't just about taking time for yourself and rejuvenating yourself and treating yourself well. It is about the connection that you have with your heart and tapping into that heart space and having boundaries and being able to invest in yourself and your creativity in a completely different way. And I hope you found these three options for creating a self-love practice helpful because in as much as self-love is for you, it also connects you to the hearts of others. And how can that possibly be selfish? My work is helping women heal the pain from their past that have been playing out as patterns in their unhealthy and unhappy relationships. If you're interested in learning more about me and my work and my coaching programs, please visit my website at irisariani.com. And until the next episode, be you, be brave, forgive yourself and others, live big. Trust yourself. Make the tough decisions even though it may break your heart. Trust that what and who leaves your life is meant to leave. Have faith that the space that's left will be filled with new experiences and opportunities that expand your heart and your life.